Hi, we're Dr. Gary's graduate students from Conservation Medicine at George Mason University, and we're here to talk to you about deciduous forest ecosystems. Temperate deciduous forests are found in three main separated areas, the eastern United States, eastern Asia, this includes parts of China, Korea, and Japan, and western and central Europe. Our focus, the North American temperate deciduous forests, are typically second growth. However, these forests that surround us preserve the world's greatest diversity of temperate deciduous forest flora and fauna. Our local area is comprised of terrestrial plants that are adapted to neither exceptionally wet nor dry conditions, with oaks and conifers being the most widespread species. Temperate deciduous forests experience four changing seasons and receive adequate amounts of rainfall each year, ranking just behind rainforest biomes. The average year-round temperature is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Summer temperatures fall around 70 degrees. Winter can bring snowfall in the more northern habitats, but amounts vary heavily. Alphasols, known as brown forest soil, is common in temperate deciduous forests. These soils are fertile to native plants and is important in the production of food and fiber. Altasols, or red clay soil, are, are also present. The majority of mammals in the ecosystem live in the ecosystem's northern region. Most are small rodents and insectivores, which could be vectors or hosts of zoonotic diseases. White-tailed deer, a spreader of Lyme disease, are considered to be one of the key species. Herb tiles are concentrated in the south and play a direct role in reducing the spread of zoonotic disease by consuming invertebrate vectors. 154 species of birds live in the eastern temperate deciduous forest. Migratory birds could bring diseases to novel areas via migratory routes, spreading diseases across natural and artificial borders. This has become a serious threat with increased interactions among humans and wildlife due to a changed landscape that affects land usage and wildlife. Today, it is estimated that only 0.1% of land in the eastern United States has been undisturbed. Forests were cleared to extract resources and make space for agriculture in the 1800s and 1900s. Forests, water, and wetlands of the eastern deciduous forest ecosystem are now surrounded by urban or agricultural areas. The threats to the forest ecosystem are thus exacerbated by human activities such as agricultural runoff, human waste and wastewater, and secondary products of manufacturing, like air and water pollution. Additionally, human-wildlife interactions are increasing as wildlife easily crosses over into suburban and urban environments, and people use forests for recreation. In addition, people accidentally or intentionally bring invasive species and pathogens with them into existing forests. Another source of pathogen and species introductions is through the movement of goods both from other parts of the U.S. and imported goods, as well as through travelers and immigrants. Today, more than 65% of the vegetables and 80% of the fruit consumed in the eastern seaboard is produced and brought in from somewhere else. Produce, people, and products may transfer pathogens, vectors, and invasive species that affect disease ecology of the temperate forest ecosystem. In terms of disease ecology, ticks are what is known as vectors of the disease because they do not become ill themselves, but they can transfer the disease to other organisms. Ticks usually acquire Lyme disease from small mammals such as the white-footed mouse, but they can also catch it from birds. The animals are known as reservoirs for the disease. Birds are less likely to host ticks when they travel long distances and are able to move ticks to new locations, spreading the disease. Lyme disease is an illness caused by a bacterial infection in the Ioxys ticks, known as deer ticks, in the East Coastal temperate ecosystems. It's found throughout the United States and in many other countries. The bacterium that causes Lyme disease is called Borrelia burgdorferi. Because Lyme disease symptoms overlap with many other illnesses, it is difficult to accurately estimate the number of people affected. Many people think you will obtain a bullseye rash if a tick carrying Lyme bites you, but this is not always the case. Lyme disease can also affect other animals, including dogs. It is possible that increased urbanization and landscape fragmentation is increasing tick density and the risk to humans of Lyme disease. If deer can thrive in a landscape and there is sufficient understory to protect ticks from desiccation, the disease may be transmitted. Tick density is much lower in truly urban areas where deer are not found. Increased prevalence of Lyme disease in suburban areas may be because opossums eat ticks in forested areas. Possums are not hosts for this pathogen. 
increased habitat fragmentation creates ecosystems that have many mice but fewer opossums and other small mammals. This increases the prevalence of Lyme disease. West Nile virus is a vector-borne disease carried by the Culex mosquitoes. Mosquitoes typically acquire this flavovirus from birds with high levels of virus in their blood. Once the virus incubates in the midgut of the mosquito and invades the salivary glands, the mosquito can then infect other susceptible birds through its bites. While birds are the main host, mosquitoes can also pass this disease onto other hosts, including humans and horses. Humans and horses experience symptoms, but they are considered incidental dead-end hosts in the West Nile virus transmission cycle. West Nile virus has caused millions of bird deaths in North America and has a fatality rate of 33% in horses. One in five humans will develop flu symptoms from infection, and a small percentage can exhibit neurological symptoms such as encephalitis and meningitis. There is currently no vaccine for West Nile virus. West Nile virus was first observed in North America in 1999, and though once considered an emerging disease, it quickly spread across the country in just four years. It is now considered an, an endemic disease, one that is present at a low but constant level in the community. Other emerging diseases to keep an eye out for in the temperate deciduous forests include diseases carried by the Aedes mosquito, including Zika, Chikungunya, and Dengue fever. This is of particular interest in light of climate change and increasing temperatures, as the habitat range of Aedes mosquitoes is growing and is invading the eastern United States. White nose syndrome is a disease that has been affecting bats of various species, spreading across North America at an alarming rate, driving some toward the brink of extinction. White nose syndrome is caused by a fungus, Pseudogeomyces dystactin. The fungus was introduced to North America by spores on shoes of cavers from Europe or China. Since the same strain of fungus is common in those two regions, but the European and Chinese bats are adapted to the fungus. In North America, however, the fungus has a 70 to 90 percent mortality rate and have killed an estimate of 6.7 million bats nationwide between 2006 to 2012. The fungus thrive in cooler environment of caves and ore mines used by bats to topper and it can infect any bats that comes into contact with the spores. Migrating bat species and human becomes important carriers that cause the rapid spread of the fungus. White nose syndrome invades and ingests the skin of bats, creating white fuzz that is clearly visible in the winter and much harder to see in the summer, making it difficult to monitor. The fungus causes irritation to the bats in topper, making them wake up more frequently than normal, which deplete their energy leading to starvation in the winter. Destruction of wing tissue and bacterial infection may also be the actual cause of death. Some bats do survive winter with white nose syndrome, but will subsequently succumb in the spring, when their immune system kicks in, attacking the fungal invader along with their own tissue. Bats eat thousands of insects per night. The decline in bat population will result in an increase in insect pests and vectors, damaging the forest, agriculture, and public health. Zoonotic diseases such as West Nile virus and Lyme disease will increase following the increase in vector population. More pests leads to a higher usage of pesticides, adding toxic runoff to the environment. The loss of bats could also disrupt cave ecosystems and put many rare and unique cave fauna in jeopardy. Currently, there is no effective treatment for white nose syndrome. Naturally occurring bacteria Rhodococcus rhodocrus can kill the fungus, but researches on the effect of the bacteria on the cave ecosystem needs to be conducted before scientists can spray the cave with the bacteria. Despite preventive measures in place, the fungus continue to spread across the landscape. Increased landscape fragmentation brings humans closer to wildlife and wildlife diseases. Rabies is a deadly illness that affects mammals. While we are able to vaccinate our pets, wild animals can still expose humans to this deadly virus. Most human cases without a clear attribution are caused by bats. In conclusion, like many ecosystems across the globe, climate change and anthropogenic change are newly affecting multiple levels of ecological health in the temperate deciduous forest.